Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick little video here. This is gonna be a single take. I don't wanna edit a lot out of this because I wanna try to get this up tomorrow. Um, past few days I've been getting a lot of comments. Oh, past about a week. I've been getting a lot of comments about the snowblower. Whether I still have the John Deere snowblower or whether I found a different one. Um, if you don't wanna know what I'm talking about, last winter I made a video about, called, uh, titled, uh, mom, 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 Why I'm in the Market for a New Snowblower. I'll link that video right up here. Right here. Um, if you haven't seen that yet, pause this video, go watch that video first, and come back. I'll wait. I got all day. Okay, now that you're back. Now you understand what I'm talking about and what my dissatisfaction is with this video. And to the one dumb dumb who commented on that video, you piss them on a lot. Yeah. You pay a lot of money for this shit. It better be good. John Deere, step up your game. Um, while we're on the comment about dumb comments, no, a 1025R is not the same as your X700. No. Your X700 weighs somewhere about 1,000 pounds. This weighs somewhere about 1,500 pounds. Not including wheel weights, extra counterweights back here. The fact that this is like twice the length of an X700. The fact that the wheelbase is like twice the length of an X700. The fact is, yeah, it may be 25 horsepower. Oh yeah, my X700's 25 horsepower. You got 25 horsepower too. This has a lot more torque. This thing, I can bog this thing down to, I can have this snowboard packed full over to the top over the drift cutters and this tractor I'll still keep going through it. I have a lot bigger tire, well I don't know about the tires, but you put this tractor low range, four wheel drive with the diff locked down and you go into any snowbank you want and it'll chew through it. Show me a video of an X700, your little gas powered X700, your X500 going through snow that's this deep and going through it like it's nothing. If I can still find that video, I'll pop a little clip of that in right now. So, no, this is not the same as your X700. And on top of that, with this wheelbase being that much longer, and I fully understand this is not the way to snowplow. Your snowplow goes, or your snowblower goes in float mode. But I guarantee you there's somebody out there who does it this way, and there's some people who do it this way. When there's hard packed snow and pick up them front wheels off the ground and that's putting all that weight and leverage on that hitch. Now I don't do that, but if I'm tweaking this hitch without doing that, I can just imagine people who snow blow that way, how much they're tweaking this hitch. And to the person who commented, well you abuse your equipment, no, my equipment's taken care of. I use it the way it's supposed to be, in float mode. Probably about the worst thing I've done to this snowblower is four wheel drive, low range, diff lock, smashing through a snow plank that's taller than that drift cutter. If that's abusing it, maybe it should be built a little bit heavier. The other probably about other thing I've done that people have seen me do in a video is Outside this door used to be gravel, and the first couple snowstorms, I wouldn't snowblow that. I would pack it in. And when I would pack it in, well, I got a snowblower on the front just to kind of smooth it out so it'd be fine for the whole year. Is I'd go up, put the snowblower in float, and back drag with the back of the snowblower. 
we're pulling flight fluffy snow, maybe two inches at a time, just to back drag it to make it smooth. That's about the two worst things I've done to this snow blower. Um, so let's talk about what the issue was and why it's a problem. I have absolutely no problem with my 1025 r I don't have too many problems with the snow blower. There's a few things I dislike, like this whole cable set up here for the auger, the fact that that's plastic, but I still haven't ever had a problem with that. I've never had a problem with this. Would I be what I like if I could have everything I wanted to have a serrated auger? Absolutely. So, what my main issue was with this is this part from here to here, this black chunk in the middle. Um, this is how bad it was. And I got videos where I think I showed in that video is I could take this snowboard and push it this way, all the way far over it went with the slop in here and then pull it back and I could move the snowblower back and forth and that might why is that a problem well here's the problem when you're going up down a driveway or a sidewalk what you can do is you come if this is your your grass is normally higher than your sidewalk or concrete your concrete is normally lower so that little edge of the grass you can bump up against it and you can feel it in the tractor. You can feel when you're against it and when you're not, when you're hitting it, when you're not. Um, it may sound queer to people, but trust me, it, once you run equipment for a while, you learn to feel the little things that most people ignore. But you can feel when you're up against that little lip on the grass. Well, with that slop, that how many inches of slop that was back and forth, by the time you could feel it in the tractor, you had that whole snowboard jammed as far over that way as you could. Well, the problem is, is then you're going, and that snowblower, it's got tension on it, pushing it this way. It wants to come back this way as you're going straight, and it'll pop over that edge and gouge out the grass. People don't like when you gouge out their grass. So, I looked around. I really do like the Radtech snowblower. They do make one for this John Deere 1025R. It's an awesome snowblower. It, like checks every box for the stuff I want. Beefy hitch, serrated auger, better design here for this. But they do not sell it in the US from what I can understand. I emailed Radtech, never got a response back. Just kind of disappointing. Um, I emailed Radtech back in April and we all know what was going on in April. Maybe that's why I never got a response back, but I just I emailed them and said, do you guys have dealers in the United States? Do you sell in the United States? I'm interested in buying one of these. Can you get me some information? And I heard crickets back. So I knew I was going to end up with a snowboard or at least for one more year. I, I got a couple ideas. I even went to look at a couple companies who make snowblowers for other tractors, but the problem is, is everyone I find that makes a snowblower for a different vehicle, different tractor does not make one for a 1025R. Probably about the coolest one I found that actually would fit on here was a loader mounted snowblower, but the problem was is the power pack that runs on the three point, it's got a pump, it's PTO driven, hydraulic tank, and then you have two main hydraulic hydrostatic lines going to the front to your snowblower. Well, that power pack, was probably about four feet off the back of the tractor. Then you got the whole loader on and a snowblower on the front of the loader, which would make this thing massively long, which defeats the purpose of having a small tractor to fit in small situations. Um, so that was probably about the coolest one I found, but just didn't fit what I needed. So let's go what I did. So, we'll, we'll address that one right away too while I just kneel down here. The John Deere 1025R uses a different hitch than X500, X700. No. This part here, this part here are identical. The exact same part numbers. The only part number that's different is this support here. 
And to my understanding, what my guess would be, is that's just to account for the different heights. You know, a 1025R sits up a lot higher than your X700, your X500. It may be a little bit narrower or wider, but... Okay, well, let's back up here for a second. What I just said can't be right. Um, if you see the comment there up on the screen, if you look at the last reply, he said he bought two... He has two machines, and he just bought one for an X700, and he said the width is different. That can't be true, because if the f part closer to the snowblower and the middle part are the same for all the models, and if you look at my comment above there, the first reply, you can Google them part numbers yourself and go on JD Parts and check them out yourself. If the width of that A-frame is the same on all of them, that would mean that the width of that bracket, that support bracket, would have to be the same on all of them too. So do your own little research if you don't believe me. Um, Google around, go on GD Parts. That first reply there on the, I'm showing on the screen, look up that and part numbers in there and see for yourself. Self, if you're starting close to the snowblower, that first part, the frame is the same for all of them. That A-frame piece, that A-shape piece, is the same for all of them. The only thing that's different is the support. And I don't believe it's for width. I believe it's for height to adjust for the different height of the different machines. But I just wanted to clarify that. It's the exact same construction, exact same thickness metal, exact same placement, exact same latches. It's exactly the same hitch. Exactly the same hitch. So let's clear that up right now. And I'm gonna pop in some pictures here of them parts. Okay, this first picture is the hitch kit for the John Deere 1025R. And this is the hitch kit for the X400, X700, X500. So okay, so now that we got that clear that my 1025R is bigger than your X700 and your X500, they use the exact same hitch. Now, eh, that's where we start to see the problem. Bigger tractor, more torque, same hitch. That's where we start questioning what John Deere was thinking. And if you're a John Deere engineer, my email is down below in the description. Send me an email. Let's talk about this. I'll even call you. I'm curious. And I'll even help you make this better because I got so many ideas on make this thing better. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like I'm going to get a call from John Deere. So, here's what I did. First thing I did is I took this whole hitch apart, every part of it. First thing I did is that bronze bushing, there's a bronze bushing in the center here for this pivot. I drilled a hole in it. I also drilled a hole in the front side here, which you can't see, and put a grease fitting in there. Once I did that, I put a stainless steel shim on the bottom and on the top to make this thing tight. I actually had to beat this piece onto the center A-frame piece with a hammer to get it to seat in there. Then I put the bolt in there. And I put a three-quarter inch impact on there and rattled that thing as tight as I could get it. See where I'm going here? Next thing I did, see that bolt head right there? Yeah. That's supposed to be a pin. That pin is right back there in the storage location. Do you see where I'm going here? Guess what I did with that bolt? That's right. Three quarter inch impact and rattled that thing tight. That takes care of the slop out of this A-frame pivot part that's designed for if you wanted to run a snow blower or a broom. Or not a snow blower, a snow plow or a broom. I don't plan on running them. Um, the other thing I thought of doing was putting a turnbuckle or a piece of bar between where this hydraulic cylinder goes here to tighten it up. But, well, bolts are cheaper than turnbuckles and... Okay, so now we come back to this back here. You see this bolt down here? Yeah. That's supposed to be a pin. Guess where that pin is? In my toolbox. We took that out. So then, what I did is... Way back there, I don't know if you can see it. There's a grease fitting. I drilled that for a grease fitting to impact this whole tube full of grease. 
I have a threaded stud. This is a long threaded stud that's threaded on both sides. I took that and shoved it all the way through instead of that pin. And the first thing I did is that little brown piece there, packed in a little bit extra grease, is an oil light bushing just to stop it from wearing. And the outside here, I have a... Oh man, this lighting is going to suck. Okay. Starting closest to the black piece out to the nut, I have another oil light bronze bushing. I have a heavier washer to act as kind of like a backer for that for that uh, bushing. And then I have four Belleville spring washers. That's why it looks like I got a stack of washers there. They're actually spring washers, so they're domed just to preload this whole system. And then I have a nut. The other side is set up exactly the same way, but what that allowed me to do is keep this piece here from bending out. So I'm gonna cut in here real quick and talk about these washers, seeing there's something most people haven't probably ever seen. So you can see, they got a slight dome to them. They're not just domed washers, they're actually Belleville spring washers. So if you take two and put it together like this, you got a certain spring force, you can stack them up like this. You have really stiff string, spring force, but not very much travel. But if I take these same four washers, Flip one, dome facing this way, dome facing this way. Flip that one, flip that one. Oops, I did something wrong here. Yeah, that way, that way. Hang on, I'm gonna mess myself up here. There we go. Let's get this right. There we go. Now, same four washers. I have twice the travel, but not as much force. Just something really cool. Um, if you want to look at some of the specs on these and what dimensions these are and that, there's a Master Car part number. These came from Master Car. They got the specs on their website and yeah, they're pretty cool stuff. Enjoy. Now, that doesn't stop all the problems. This thing still has some play in it, but it's, oh my god, so much better. And if you don't believe me that this thing moved back and forth, if you go to my 2020 rewind video, which I'll link right up here again, the seven minute mark, I have a video going down the driveway and I have the camera mounted somewhere like here. And if you watch this edge of that snowblower as I'm going down the driveway, it's doing this. So, that was my quick and dirty solution, as I got a pile of grease right there. Um, now, this piece here, this they call it a support, that's only eighth inch thick material. That's only eighth of an inch thick. And that's got to transfer all that weight from way up here down to here. Well. I can tell you this much, this is bent here. This is bent in or out, whatever way it is. This piece here, if I put a straight edge on here going up and down, this is a slight bow to it. So this whole piece is bending. And uh, even before I put these nuts in here, this was also bent out down here. Because the only thing that's holding it is there's a bar up here, this big tube that your hydraulic cylinders well well they do and then way back here hopefully you can see it right here is a bar going across on the back side so that's the only thing that keeps this piece square there's no no support you know they could have had one maybe right here above this head just above this PTL um, just to try to rigidify this maybe I would even put one just right about here just in front of that pin going across uh, or maybe a nice piece of flat bar going all the way across. Other thing maybe would have been a smart idea is to gusset this right here. But I think what my solution is if I can't find another snowblower or can't find a different snowblower go on here, I'm going to go to John Deere, get a new one of these, and I'm going to sacrifice this one, torch this off, torch this off, and use these side plates to fish plate the new one. Um, 
And then I'll probably add some cross bracing in here, some gussets in here, just to try to make this as strong as possible. Make this so it's like a quarter inch. Um, and this is bent so bad that this pin down here, I can move it. But in order to get it to latch in, I actually have to beat on this pin with a hammer because it's almost half the hole off. So, yeah. That's what I did to tighten this, tighten this thing up. Um, and I'll show you the other side. It's exactly the same. So, same exact thing. Nut, bronze bushing. And there you can see that grease start a little bit better. And like I said, I also put a greaser in the front. So that took care of a majority of the slop. Um, we still have slop down here in these pinholes because they're walled out. So that would be the other thing i do is if I don't find a new snowblower, can't find a different snowblower, I would probably drill them out and put like a hardened steel bushing in there and weld that back into the snowblower. Same thing, I'd probably... I don't know about down here. But same thing with where these pins go in. I'd probably drill that out and put like a hardened steel bushing in there so it can't. So it'd chew out the pin before it would chew out the hole. And then maybe every couple years you just have to replace these pins and they'd be like a wear item. Um, yeah. But this is just by running this thing normally. This isn't abusing it. It's just a really bad design. Um, just, no. So it'd be really cool. I have looked into this a little bit is seeing if I can't get that European three-point hitch in the United States. And I believe just from looking on the European John Deere website, it seems like there's a conversion kit to convert this snow lore to fit on with that three-point hitch would be another option. But yeah, so comment down below for all the People I didn't piss off by making fun of the X700 and X500 and telling you that it's not the same as my 1025R. If you're one of them people and are easily offended, I'm sorry, but reality. Reality. Um, so here's what I can use for you guys' help. If you bought a Radtech snowblower and you're in the United States, or even if you're in Canada, Comment your dealer and, you know, maybe, you know, dealer, Canada, dealer, United States. I doubt there's any United States because from what I understand is it's not sold in the United States. But maybe if I can find a dealer in Canada that's willing to ship one to the United States, um, would be awesome. The only thing that concerns me about that is parts. Just because if I break something here now, it's a 10-minute drive. My dealer's got the parts. And I can get go back up and going. Where if I have a snowboarder that's not supported in the United States, if I break something, then I got to call our dealer in Canada, get him to ship it to the United States, blah, 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 blah. It just ends up being a headache. But if it gets me away from this, I guess I'll do it. Um, if you're a dealer, if you're Reister and Schnell, or Ice Implement, or... Caroline Equipment or Central Equipment or any dealer in Wisconsin and want to contact Rad Tech or if you are a dealer of Rad Tech that I missed and um, want to reach out to me, once again, email will be down below in the description. Um, if you're an aftermarket snowblower manufacturer for small compact tractors and want to build one for the John Deere 1025R, I can get you all the measurements and specs that you want off of this one. Um, reach out to me and let me know what you need and we'll get one built. I mean, there's about 85, 90% of the people in my comments seem to have a problem with this and the other 10 to 15%, oh, I never had a problem with that, but I have a suspicion that the other 10 to 15% are running X500s, X700s and yeah. Um, also, kind of like the last video, let me know what you're running it on, what model, how many years you had it, and if you have a problem with it. Um, 
And if you know of any manufacturers for aftermarket snowboards, whether or not they make one for John Deere or not, put them down below, the name of them down below, because it's really hard to try to find all these companies. And if I can kind of crowdsource, crowdsource my research to save me a little bit of time, it would be awesome. If I can just get a, you know, X and X company makes a snowblower for the Coyote. Well, maybe I can reach out to them and be like, hey, I got a 1025R. John Deere's snowblower hitch system kind of sucks. Are you interested in making one for a 1025R? And maybe we can get one out there in the market. Um, just, yeah, so. Any information helps. Like I said, comment down below. My email is down in the description. Let's see what we can get going here. This thing sucks. That black hitch quick attach system sucks. I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm not complaining, but it sucks. Three years, two years, two and a half years with that hitch, and I bent the crap out of it and warped it and had so much play in it. That's doing one, two, three, four, four or five driveways at a time for two and a half years. This is my third year with the snowblower. Yeah. So, yeah, and like I said, this thing's not abused. Like, the paint's still pretty well intact on it. Um, find a couple stones that got jammed in there underneath there. You know, cutting edge isn't even wore out the first cutting edge yet. You know, we obviously do get in the grass a little bit now and then. Um... I'm pretty much done with all the gravel crap now, so there's no gravel to deal with. Um, yeah, that's just kind of my thoughts and opinions and looking for help and research and information, and we'll see what we can come up with. Um, there should be a new video coming out Thursday or Friday, depending when I have time to edit it, on snowblowing. And you can see in that video how much better this is with snowblowing and oh, night and day difference. But, there you go, that's it. See ya. Yeah, I like how at the beginning of the video, oh, this is gonna be a single take, not a lot of editing. I just spent three hours editing this video.